In 2096, a brand new VR real.life experience game. The end of infinite flow swept the world, with the slogan of prioritizing non-zero money, financial resources, intelligence, power, fame and fortune, and strength, creating one style after another of game scenes that became popular worldwide. Some even exchanged their game currency with real currency in a 1.1 ratio, and many people became rich and prosperous through this. But at the same time, there are also many people who are punished for carrying huge debts due to the failure of this game. This game is not about death, only about winning and losing. The winners receive generous rewards, while the losers suffer a crushing defeat. When you implant a chip, the character and body merge, you may no longer be you, you can have a better life. Let's immerse ourselves in it. Keywords of the novel Endless pop-ups of Infinite Flow, Endless TXT Complete Collection Download of Infinite Flow, Latest Chapter Reading of Endless Flow Chapter 1 Popular Games Across the Internet You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1 Popular Games Across the Internet, Loading, Please Wait, Chip Number A56V56, First Attempt to Link Game, Loading in Progress Process 60% Process 90% Loading Successful Welcome to the Gaming World A56V56 Please enter your name, Mr. Su Wentao. Your body data will be loaded here, please wait, successfully loaded, forming a virtual character. When you implant a chip and the character blends with your body, you may no longer be you, but you can have a better life. Let's immerse ourselves in it. There is no moral bottom line here, only gambling and happiness. This game has no death, only winning and losing. Winners receive generous rewards, and losers are defeated. Welcome to Endless Flow. The game environment for this game is Grim Soul Lock, which is a horror game plot. Death bears 80% of the pain, note that it cannot be changed, so please protect yourself. There are 100 game participants and one person has completed the level. Entering the game successfully. The game is starting. Su Wentao opened his eyes and looked around, only able to see the ceiling and chandeliers. He lay on a small bed. Su Wentao slowly got up and found himself in a room with a desk, bookshelf, wardrobe, desk lamp, and a single bed. Judging from the surrounding environment, it was a very ordinary bedroom. He looked at his hand and walked up to the mirror to find that his virtual character was not much different from himself, but his green hair was too eye dot catching. At this moment, the sound of opening the door suddenly came. Su Wentao looked over and saw a woman in pajamas standing at the door. She was taken aback when she saw Su Wentao, then widened her eyes as if she had thought of something and quickly shouted. Thief! The woman's voice was loud, sharp, and frightened. She turned around and wanted to run. Su Wentao was surprised and quickly ran over to cover her mouth, control her, and nervously said, I'm not a thief. Don't shout. Woo woo. The woman struggled desperately, and Su Wentao didn't know what to do when suddenly the sound of the doorbell came from her side. Hello, the takeout you ordered is here. A young girl's voice came from outside the door. She ordered takeout. The woman struggled even harder upon hearing this, and her arms broke free as she ran for her life towards the door. Su Wentao screamed inwardly and quickly chased after her, but it was still one step late. The woman had already opened the door, and there was a girl with a hat standing at the door. Just as she was about to speak, the girl suddenly struck her neck with her hand, and the woman fainted on the ground. Su Wentao was stunned when he saw this scene. And at this moment, the girl took off her hat, her silver short hair stretching over her earlobes, revealing half of her neck. Her hair on the front right side was slightly longer than her collarbone, and she was very beautiful. Her face was as delicate as peonies, and her eyebrows and eyes were as charming as willows and lotus, exuding a confident and confident beauty. At this moment, this beautiful girl smiled brightly at Su Wentao. I found you. Hey, you know me. 
Su Wentao paused for a moment, then regained his senses and looked at the girl with some confusion. If he had remembered such a beautiful girl, he would have remembered it. Of course, and I came specifically to find you. The girl walked over with a smile and stopped at a distance of half a meter from Su Wentao. Then she turned around and kicked Su Wentao away. Su Wentao was completely paralyzed on the ground, with 80% of the pain making him unable to move. At this moment, he also saw that his originally bloody blood bar had dropped 10%. What? Su Wentao is now completely in a state of confusion, he doesn't even know why he was beaten. Ha! Huh. Newcomer. The girl frowned in surprise at Su Wentao's behavior and walked over to squat beside him. No wonder, but there's nothing we can do. We can't just keep our heads in our hands. Don't meet me again next time. Without hesitation, he drew a dagger from his waist and wiped his neck. Blood bars instantly cleared to zero. Before Su Wentao could ask why or what happened, he left the game like this. There are currently 86 survivors in the game, it seems that someone else has also taken action. She looked at the bulletin board above her head, then lowered her head to look at the deceased Su Wentao. She wiped the dagger with his clothes, put it back on her waist, and left the room without hesitation. As for what would happen if it was discovered, it was not within her thinking range. She is now going to catch new prey. If you have a brain hole, just open it up, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 Grievance Soul Lock, 1 You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 2 Grievance Soul Lock, 1 Su Xiaotian is a high school student, but not an ordinary high school student. His eyes can communicate with ghosts and gods. Ding hello, welcome to visit. In a 24.hour convenience store, Su Xiaotian, looking haggard, chose coffee and placed it at the cashier. 6 Yuan WeChat or Alipay in total, asked the cashier. Cash. Su Xiaotian took out his wallet, opened it, and handed it to the cashier. Just as he was about to find a coin, a wave of resentment swept over him. Subconsciously, he looked up and saw that the 5 yuan paper money in the cashier's hand suddenly became dirty and full of blood. Behind the cashier, a little ghost suddenly appeared, covered in blood. Her fangs were wide open, and her sticky hand was pressed against the cashier's face. She looked at him with red eyes, half smiling, and her voice was as piercing as the sound of chalk scraping the blackboard. This is my money. Su Xiaotian snatched it and then took out his phone to look at the bewildered cashier, saying, that's not enough money, WeChat. Oh, okay, said the strange person. The cashier blinked his eyes and scanned the code with a bewildered expression, then watched as Su Xiaotian left and touched his back neck, feeling a chill just now after coming out, Su Xiaotian ran to the nearby park bench and sat down. He looked at the 5 yuan paper money in his hand, which still looked dirty. Then, a bloody face suddenly appeared in front of him. Ah! Su Xiaotian was startled. What's the noise, it's early in the morning. At this moment, the voice coming from beside him startled him again. He quickly turned his head and looked at a touch of silver. Then he saw a girl who looked at him with an unhappy expression. He instinctively lowered his head and looked at the ground. There was a shadow, not a ghost. He breathed a sigh of relief and quickly apologized. Sorry, I didn't notice anyone next to me. Ah, it's okay. The girl looked up at his head for some reason, then waved her hand with a lack of interest, stood up and patted the dust off her body. She moved her body, feeling a bit sour. It seemed like she couldn't sleep on the bench for a day, but she didn't have the money, what's your name? The girl didn't know what she was thinking before suddenly turning her head to look at him and asking. Su Xiaotian. Su Xiaotian couldn't understand why he asked his name, but he simply answered the question. My name is Twelve, Guan Twelve. The girl suddenly smiled at him, and Su Xiaotian couldn't help but be stunned. He then realized that this girl named Guan Twelve was very beautiful, even more beautiful than their school flower. 
I ran out of the mountain to find friends, but got lost and now I have nowhere to live. Can kind that hearted people take me in? Guan Twelve suddenly gave him a seductive glance. Okay, okay. Su Xiaoxianxia, who was tempted by beauty, nodded consciously and then realized something was wrong. He looked at the girl in front of him incredulously and asked, Do you want to live with me? Okay, after all, you just nodded. Guan Twelve smiled and looked at Su Xiaotian. But you're a woman, don't worry, I'll leave immediately after I find my friend. I won't trouble you, Guan Twelve said with a pleading gesture, clasping his hands together. I am penniless and homeless now, and I am about to starve to death on the streets. Saving someone's life is better than building a level 7 floating slaughterhouse. Please, please, Su Xiaotian took out the key and opened the door. As usual, there was no one around, after all, he had always lived alone. One person goes out and one comes back, one goes to school and one cooks. Your family is quite big, isn't it? It's just different this time, he brought back a girl. Guan Twelve looked at the room and found that Su Xiaotian's room was very clean and had basic equipment. From the moment she entered, she noticed the strange richness of the community. I don't want to talk about the good green belt at the entrance. What is the address of the friend you're looking for? We can contact the police. Su Xiaotian said as she tried to make a phone call, but was stopped by Guan Dui. She smiled and said. It's no use looking for the police, they are all gangsters. As soon as Su Xiaotian spoke, a strange expression surged on his face, and he looked at Guan Twelve with a complex expression. I have an ID card, don't worry if it's not a black account. Su Xiaotian breathed a sigh of relief, but at the same time, he still didn't understand why Guan Twelve's friend was a gangster. But the girl clearly didn't want to explain too much to him. She pointed to the refrigerator and asked, Can I open it? Ah, uh, yes. Su Xiaotian nodded. Guan Twelve said thank you and quickly walked to the refrigerator. After opening it, she looked at the crowded refrigerator and her eyes lit up. Are you hungry? I'll cook for you. Is there anything you want to eat? Su Xiaotian walked over and noticed Guan Twelve's expression. He smiled and said, Really? You're such a great person. Thank you. I don't have to choose anything. Guan Twelve's whole body lit up, and now she was like a little girl who had her beloved toy. Su Xiaotian couldn't help but feel a surge in his heart. He quickly didn't come over and touched his nose, saying, You go to the living room to rest first, I'll be fine soon. Take Guan Twelve to the living room, he goes back to the kitchen to take a deep breath and exhale, patting his hair and burning his cheeks. All right, Su Xiaotian. Don't daydream. Cook quickly. He took out eggs, dried noodles and bean paste. He planned to make simple zajiangmian. First, he received water. Su Xiaotian held a bowl and just turned on the tap. Scarlet liquid flowed out of the pipe, and then climbed onto Su Xiaotian's hand. The surrounding scenery suddenly turned dark red, and Su Xiaotian's pupils shrank. He couldn't move and could only watch helplessly as the pool was filled with crimson liquid and spread out, eventually filling the ground with red liquid. And slowly reaching out a hand in the muddy liquid on the floor, the red nail was a very beautiful hand. It grabbed Su Xiaotian's calf and slowly climbed up, one hand changing into two hands, revealing black hair that was long and covered her face and body, but she didn't have a lower body. Her lower body was bloody and dripping. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Grievance Soul Lock, 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Grievance Soul Lock, 2 Give me My Money Back to me. The long-haired female ghost let out a piercing voice, her resentment condensed into a solid entity that pressed Su Xiaotian hard to breathe. Her hands with red nails had already climbed onto his face, and her fingertips were piercing his face fiercely. It was painful, but he couldn't break free. 
Over the years, he thought he had become accustomed to it, but every time he was afraid and scared please. Is there anyone to save him? No matter who it is. Help him. Su Xiaotian closed his eyes in fear, but the imagined pain did not appear. He opened his eyes, and the female ghost disappeared. Everything just now was like an illusion. Isn't it okay yet? At this moment, Guan Twelve suddenly walked over and couldn't help but pause when she saw the red mark on Su Xiaotian's cheek. She scanned the surroundings and confirmed that there was no one else. So, how did the wound appear? Ah, uh, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting for so long, it will be over soon. Su Xiaotian pretended that nothing had happened and smiled at Guan Twelve. Guan Twelve stared at the red mark on his cheek for a long time, then turned around and left. How was that wound caused? Guan Twelve suddenly remembered that the plot of this game is called Grim Soul Lock, which is a horror script, which means there should be something she cannot see around Su Xiaotian. Su Xiaotian had been busy for a long time. When Guan Twelve heard the clanging sound in the kitchen, he knew that Su Xiaotian's meal was not peaceful. However, she did not walk in again. Instead, when Su Xiaotian brought out the meal and both of them sat on the table, Guan Twelve pointed to his cheek and said. Don't wipe it. Su Xiaoxiangxia consciously touched his face and then looked at it, and saw the bloodstains on his fingertips, which were clearly felt on his face. He casually wiped and then explained with a hint of guilt, I accidentally spilled tomato sauce just now. Lie to ghosts. That color and viscosity are not even tomato sauce, right? Guan Twelve thought to himself. All right, hurry up and eat, aren't you hungry? But it was obvious that Su Xiaotian didn't want to discuss this matter and was desperately pulling the topic apart. The meal was very quiet. I have to say that Su Xiaotian's craftsmanship is very good. A simple Zajiangmian can be very delicious. After eating three bowls of noodles, Guan Twelve almost shocked Su Xiaotian's jaw. He instinctively looked at Guan Twelve's thin waist, which was hard to grip, and thought to himself that all the food had gone there. After finishing the meal, Guan Twelve lay on the sofa board watching TV, occasionally laughing at interesting programs. As Su Xiaotian was washing dishes in the kitchen and listening to the sound coming from the living room, he couldn't help but curl his lips. In the past, this house used to be too quiet, but now it has become much more lively with one more person. Perhaps it's good to keep going like this. Su Xiaotian thought to himself. Do you miss me? Su Xiaotian was still silent in his imagination when a sinister and terrifying voice suddenly came from behind, pulling him back to reality. He instinctively turned his head and suddenly grabbed his neck with a big hand, lifting him up. Su Xiaotian tightly grasped the person's arms with both hands, and the lack of oxygen made his face turn red. The female ghost had long hair and mopped the floor, leaving only the upper half of her body suspended in the air, dripping blood from her waist and abdomen. The entire kitchen floor was covered in her blood. And the face exposed by long hair is a bloody face without human skin, only flesh, with round and large eyes that seem to fall out at any time, gums and sharp teeth all exposed. Why aren't you looking for me? The female ghost opened her mouth and spat blood, spreading resentment throughout the room. Even Guan Twelve in the living room felt it, and she instinctively looked towards the kitchen Su Xiaotian is desperately working on it. He feels dizzy and bloated, and is about to suffocate. Why? Why did he suffer all this? What exactly did he do wrong? Anyone, please, no matter who it is. Help him. Su Xiaotian felt like he was about to lose consciousness, leaving behind tears of unwillingness. At that moment, a figure suddenly rushed over. Guan Twelve bit his finger and drew a talisman on the female ghost's body. He took a few steps back, opened his hands, and held his index finger upright while bending the other fingers. Then he quickly transformed his second dot hand index finger to stand upright, overlapping the middle finger with the middle finger, and bending the little and ring fingers. Then, the thumb stood upright, 
while the ring, middle, and thumb stood upright. The little and index fingers bent, and the index and thumb stood upright, while the other fingers met at the fingernails. Bend all fingers outward and then follow the combination of bending all fingers inward. Stand up your left index finger, hold it with your right hand, and place your thumb inside. The second dot hand thumb and index finger form a circle. The thumb and index finger of her left hand are circled, while the other fingers of her left hand lightly clench their fists and wrap her right hand around it. Her gaze is firm and she says. Lin. Bing. Do. Those. All. Formation. Lie. Front. Go. Kill the evil. With the official 12-1. A huge magic formation covered the entire kitchen, surrounding the female ghost. The female ghost burned with magic, causing unbearable pain. At the same time, it also released Su Xiaotian. Su Xiaotian fell to the ground and took big breaths of air, relieving his painful expression. His swollen face slowly regained its blood color. Guan Twelve stared closely at the female ghost in the formation until she was completely wiped out before she breathed a sigh of relief. The female ghost was eliminated, and the surrounding temperature returned to normal. Guan Twelve walked up to Su Xiaotian, who was lying on the ground coughing desperately, and slightly bent his knees and reached out his hand. Su Xiaotian looked up at Guan Twelve's outstretched hand, lifted it up, and Guan Twelve pulled him to stand up. At this moment, Su Xiaotian was much better. He looked at Guan Twelve apologetically and apologized. I'm sorry for startling you. Well, I was really surprised. That female ghost is too ugly, Guan Twelve couldn't help but show a look of disgust on the face of the half-body female ghost. The key doesn't seem to be that. When did you start? I don't remember, it seems like it has been like this since I had memories. The ghosts I saw before were very kind, although they were scary, they were very kind to me, at least they wouldn't want to kill me. But recently, I don't know why, those ghosts are very scary, and they are extremely resentful. Su Xiaotian's face turned pale, and he didn't know why this happened. Didn't you watch it? Even though he knew that Su Xiaotian was just a character in the plot, Guan Twelve couldn't help but ask. I tried to find someone, but it didn't have much effect. But I heard my mom say she found me a master, and the master will come over in a few days. Guan Twelve looked at Su Xiaotian, who seemed to have no hope for this master. Guan Twelve looked at it but didn't say anything. That. What was that you just did? Su Xiaotian wanted to imitate the gesture of Guan Twelve just now, but couldn't remember how much. In the end, he could only make a rough gesture. This is for exorcism, Guan Twelve answered perfunctorily, clearly not wanting to continue discussing this topic. But Su Xiaotian's eyes lit up and he anxiously asked, Are you a Taoist? No, Guan Twelve rejected without hesitation. Su Xiaotian's expression darkened, but he didn't continue to inquire. After settling down, Guan Twelve returned to his room to rest. Su Xiaotian finally had a good night's sleep that night. Su Xiaotian. Are you a Taoist? Twelve, I am not a Taoist. Daily kneeling for tickets, end of this chapter. Chapter 4. Grievance Soul Lock, 3. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Grievance Soul Lock, 3. The next day, Su Xiaotian got up early and was about to cook when he suddenly smelled the aroma of the rice. He thought of something and quickly walked to the kitchen, where he saw Guan Twelve busy in the kitchen, humming an unknown song. It seemed like he was in a good mood, and even jumped a few times. Su Xiaotian looked at the beautiful figure bathed in the sunshine, a little lost in thought. Guan Twelve turned around and noticed Su Xiaotian in a daze. She was not surprised, but just smiled and said. Do you mind if I use your kitchen? Su Xiaotian regained his composure, blushed and said he didn't understand, then looked at Guan Twelve in surprise and said. Can you cook? Sure. 
Guan Twelve put the scrambled eggs on a plate and handed them to Su Xiaotian. Su Xiaotian looked at the golden fried egg, emitting a tempting luster, just like the person who made it, making people's eyes fixed. Su Xiaotian was eating, but his eyes kept looking at Guan Twelve from time to time. Do you have anything to tell me? Guan Twelve put down her chopsticks and asked Su Xiaotian across from her. Um, I'll be going to school later. Yes, Su Xiaotian is still a high school student and he needs to go to school, but Guan Twelve is not, which means he wants to leave Guan Twelve alone at home. Su Xiaotian is a bit uneasy. Well, I'll go out with you. Hey! Are you going to school too? Su Xiaotian was a little surprised. No, I'm going to find my friend, Guan Twelve shook his head. Oh, Su Xiaotian felt a bit disappointed. Thinking about it, if Guan Twelve had gone to the same school as him, then the school flower would have been hers long ago, and there was something wrong with that Li Miao Miao. Do you leave when you find your friend? Su Xiaotian asked cautiously, not knowing why. He looked forward to but didn't want to know the answer. Yes, I'll leave if I find a friend. Guan Twelve looked at the remaining number of people, there were still sixty people, faster than she thought. She also had to go a little faster. Although it was good to get through to the end, the MVP could have additional rewards. She is very tempted by the extra rewards and must receive them. She didn't notice the disappointed look in Su Xiaotian's eyes after she finished saying these words. Guan Twelve followed Su Xiaotian out and watched as at least ten players passed by, including ice cream sellers, milk tea sellers, balloon buyers, and others. There were quite a few players on the way. The game team will indeed place players near the plot. Until school, Guan Twelve said he was waiting for Su Xiaotian here after school. Su Xiaotian was overjoyed and then went to school with a heart full of joy. Guan Twelve saw off Su Xiaotian and turned to find the player. It is obvious that those players are also ready, finding a dead end and starting to fight. Guan Twelve hid on the side and watched them punching and kicking, with a few wealthy individuals holding guns trenching gun. How much money have you spent? Of course, it's not just Guan Twelve who has this idea. The other players stopped moving as soon as they saw the person pull out the pistol. They all looked at the player holding the pistol in unison. It's obvious that this group of people united the front line and killed the difficult Kryptonian first. The player holding a cold weapon fired wildly at the group of players and was hit. The players angrily raised their middle finger, cursed and forced them to die. Two fists are difficult to defeat four hands, and a pistol is difficult to carry out a surprise attack. In the end, the player holding the gun was killed by one of the attackers. He looked at the smiling player with resentment and said, You don't talk about martial arts. Then he chuckled. Are you holding a pistol? Are you blaming me for not being good at martial arts? Are you having a problem with your mind? This made the player kick the body several times in anger. Officer 12. Let your mouth be cheap. Even if one dies, one cannot live peacefully. Originally, there were only three or five players left, and several players were lying on the ground. Guan Twelve looked up at the camera above her head, which was exactly the position above her head. When she killed that player yesterday, she discovered that this place was a rule of law society where she had to deal with the player's body with great effort to avoid being discovered. Otherwise, she would be in prison now. This game is not good at all. The bodies of eliminated players will not disappear, and players need to handle it themselves. Guan Twelve thought for a moment and then touched his pocket. Damn it. No phone. How annoying. Guan Twelve turned around and glanced at a passing student. He quickly ran over and said with a smile, Classmate, can you lend me your phone? The person was taken aback for a moment, then nodded and handed the phone to Guan Twelve. Guan Twelve held the phone and dialed 110. Hello police officer, my location is 27 Hutong, number 5 X Street, X City. 
There has been a heinous mass killing incident here. Please hurry over as soon as possible. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Officer 12, who completed the alarm, returned his phone to the shocked student and asked him to leave quickly. Then Guan Xiujing waited for the police uncle to come and directly caught the player. The player looked bewildered and said. Who called the police? At this moment, Guan Twelve secretly ran out and said to the player, I called the police. Players are dumbfounded. Holy crap you're just a player. What are you reporting to the police for? What's the benefit of getting me inside for you? What good would it be for you if I went in, you idiot? The player cursed at Guan Twelve, and the police officer next to him looked at him with a look of mental illness. Even a person who looked like he was about to die from injuries still had the mental energy to curse at passers-by. This is not what mental illness is. It is obvious that the police uncle mistook Guan Twelve for a passerby. Guan Twelve blinked his eyes and looked innocent. How could it not be beneficial? The player's blood is now fragile. Guan Twelve secretly took out a small dagger, and she just pretended to accidentally hit him and stabbed him. Anyway, there were also many knife wounds on his body and he wouldn't notice them in a short period of time. Guan Twelve was about to take action when suddenly a figure collided with the player faster than her. She saw that the player's health bar was gone, and the player died on the spot. The people around were all confused, and two police uncles quickly chased after the player who had hit the person. Officer 12. Digging trenches to grab people's heads. The person who hit someone ran away after the collision. Guan Twelve clearly saw the blood frame on the person's head, which was shining brightly. It's a player, her head was stolen by the player. Guan Twelve felt uncomfortable and anxious in his heart, it was even more uncomfortable than eating shit. I couldn't help but have my head snatched, and it's pointless to stay in this place. Officer Twelve turned around and wanted to leave, but was stopped by the police uncle. He seems to know you, could you please come with me to take a transcript? Officer 12. Does this count as picking up a stone and smashing oneself in the foot? Guan 12 followed the police uncle to the police station. After investigation, it was found that the two of them had no direct relationship. Guan 12 was a passerby who acted bravely, and the deceased player was preliminarily diagnosed with mental illness. What mental illness should kill people on the street? The police sister couldn't help roast. Officer 12. I'm sorry that the player's mental state scared you all. It's okay, uh, end of this chapter. Chapter 5. Grievance Soul Lock, 4. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 Grievance Soul Lock, 4. It was already 10 p.m. when Guan 12 came out of the police station. After calculating the time, Su Xiaotian should have already returned home after school, so he decided to go straight back. When Guan Twelve knocked on the door and waited for a long time without anyone responding, she suddenly realized something was wrong and turned around, quickly running towards the school. On the other side, Su Xiaotian stood at the school gate after school, looking expectant. Xiaotian, aren't you going home? At this moment, a beautiful girl walked up to Su Xiaotian and asked in confusion. According to the past, Su Xiaotian should be going home now. I'm waiting for my friend, she's coming to pick me up, Su Xiaotian said with a smile. The girl looked at Su Xiaotian's happy expression. Su Xiaotian had always been lifeless and without friends, always alone. Now, this is the normal way for high school students to behave. Well, okay. Then I'll go first. Mmm, -mm, goodbye. Su Xiaotian said goodbye to the girl and continued to wait. From five to six, from six to seven, it was gradually getting dark, and Su Xiaotian was still standing at the door. His eyes were blank and he didn't know what he was thinking. Jie Jie Jie, she lied to you how could such a beautiful woman come to pick you up? The street lamp illuminated the shadow behind Su Xiaotian, and suddenly a figure appeared. The hands with sharp nails tightly hooked around Su Xiaotian's neck from behind him. 
Su Xiaotian's whole body stiffened. The face, which was green and full of pus, slowly approached Su Xiaotian's cheek and rubbed against him, the pungent and rotten smell making Su Xiaotian nauseous. Think about it, who would be willing to be friends with someone who can see ghosts? The female ghost chuckled and caressed Su Xiaotian's cheek. Su Xiaotian's nails were naturally painful, but he was now controlled and unable to move. Isn't the little girl you liked in elementary school also scared away by you? Your parents are also afraid to leave you alone in an empty house, and everyone who comes close to you will be afraid and scared. For more ghosts emerged from the shadows, without eyes. Their eyes were round, large, and hollow, and their mouths rolled back to their heads. They were naked and smiling happily. Su Xiaotian felt both uncomfortable and cold, with a female ghost constantly exerting pressure on him. The cold language was even colder than his heart, and the thorns in his words fiercely pierced his chest, causing him pain. Su Xiaotian closed his eyes. He firmly believed that Guan Twelve was not that kind of person, and that the two of them had only known each other for a day. She had nothing to do with waiting or waiting. But she deceived you. The female ghost laughed even happier when she heard Su Xiaotian's thoughts in her heart. She gently dragged Su Xiaotian's chin and extended his neck directly from behind to Su Xiaotian's face. Su Xiaotian didn't turn his face, but soon the female ghost forcefully pulled his chin apart. I didn't have much to do with her originally, what if we lied to each other? Su Xiaotian looked fiercely at the female ghost. This evil ghost that has been haunting him for a long time always uses seductive words to make him fall into a state of collapse. If he had been afraid and fearful before, but now he still gets used to it. The female ghost suddenly got angry when she heard this sentence for some reason. She reached out her claws and grabbed Su Xiaotian's face. Su Xiaoxiangxia consciously closed his eyes, and at this moment, a figure suddenly appeared, with a talisman paper pasted on the arm of the female ghost. The female ghost let out a mournful cry, released Su Xiaotian, and then disappeared, while the other ghosts also ran away. Su Xiaotian covered his neck and looked at the person coming, who was a young man wearing a Zhongshan suit. He looked about the same size as him, with starry eyebrows and eyes, thin lips slightly pursed, and a yellow talisman paper between his fingers. He was a graceful young man. The boy originally wanted to chase after the female ghost, but her aura disappeared quickly. He had not yet used the tracking symbol, so he had to give up. He looked at Su Xiaotian, the person who was causing trouble. He reached out and grabbed Su Xiaotian's wrist, and Su Xiaotian looked at him in confusion. The body of the Yin. The young man frowned as he looked at Su Xiaotian, no wonder he provoked that fierce ghost. That. Are you. Li Zhong, the second son of the Gu Yin Yang Shi family. Li Zhong took out his business card and handed it to Su Xiaotian, who took it and glanced at it. I have been invited by your parents to come and untie the ghost entanglement on you, Li Zhong looked at Su Xiaotian. Su Xiaotian blinked his eyes. So he is the master that his parents said. In order to resolve your secret as soon as possible, will it be convenient for us to live together next? Li Zhong asked. Su Xiaotian has made a mistake. If he had been alone before, it wouldn't have been much, but now there is still a girl in his family speaking of which, would she be waiting for him at home, but it seems like she doesn't have a key Su Xiaotian suddenly had a picture of Guan Twelve squatting at the door, Wei Chu Ba, in his mind. His heart tightened, and he must hurry back now. Hello. Li Zhong couldn't help but frown when he saw Su Xiaotian in a daze for no reason. He then slapped his hands and let out a snap to make Su Xiaotian come to his senses. Su Xiaotian looked back at Li Zhong with an apologetic expression and said, I'm sorry, this one. At this moment, a figure suddenly ran over, and Su Xiaotian's eyes lit up. The person who came was Guan Twelve. Guan Twelve ran to Su Xiaotian panting heavily, holding onto his shoulder and gasping for breath, I didn't expect you to shout and wait here. I'm afraid you'll leave. 
what if you can't find me? Su Xiaotian looked at Guan Twelve and smiled. Guan Twelve looked at Su Xiaotian's smile, extremely innocent. Even though he almost got pigeoned, he could still be so happy. Guan Twelve wanted to give him a big slap. I almost stood you up, are you still laughing so happily? Guan Twelve raised his eyebrows and asked. Su Xiaotian was taken aback for a moment, and with a bitter smile, he said, but you didn't stand me up, and besides, you're here. You're really Guan Twelve didn't know what to say for a moment. Too kind, this person is really too kind. Such a kind person will only exist in the virtual world of the game plot, right? Who are you? Li Zhong couldn't help but ask as he watched the interaction between the two. Guan Twelve only then noticed Li Zhong. She instinctively looked at his head and said, Hmm. There's no blue bar, it's still a storyline NPC, not a player. It's not that player Guan Twelve has no interest at all, but she still reached out and smiled, Guan Twelve. Li Zhong. Li Zhong returned his grip on Guan Twelve, and the two of them shook and released it. Li Zhong didn't seem to like Guan Twelve, and Guan Twelve didn't need Li Zhong to like him at all. The atmosphere between the two was extremely awkward. Li Zhong continued to ask Su Xiaotian the question he had just asked, is it inconvenient for me to live with you? Uh, Su Xiaoxianxia instinctively looked at Guan Twelve. Guan Twelve shrugged and said, I don't have any inconvenience. Dot. What do you mean? Are you two living together now? Before Su Xiaotian could speak, Li Zhong frowned and asked with an incredulous expression. Li Zhong. I was extremely surprised at that time, end of this chapter. Chapter 6 Grievance Soul Lock, 5 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Grievance Soul Lock, 5, ah, that's right. Guan Twelve nodded with a natural expression, and Su Xiaotian's face had turned red like a persimmon. He quickly waved his hand and explained. No, no, she just stayed at my house for a while. Li Zhong looked at Guan Twelve with some suspicion, and then said to Su Xiaotian. Although I say things outside of the task are not good, I think you should still be a bit vigilant. Just let others enter your home casually. What if it's not good for you? Hmm. No, I believe her. Su Xiaotian shook his head and looked at Guan Twelve with great trust. Officer Twelve. The NPC's inexplicable trust in the player has made the player lose control. Li Zhong couldn't help but sigh as he looked at Su Xiaotian's innocent expression. Such foolishness is really rare. Recently, Li Zhong still moved into Su Xiaotian's house. Su Xiaotian's house is very large, but only has two bedrooms. Guan Twelve occupies one, and Su Xiaotian is not too embarrassed to let Li Zhong sleep on the sofa. He suggested sleeping in the living room and then Li Zhong sleep in his room. The proposal puzzled the player and she asked, You two are both men, can't you live together? Li Zhong. Su Xiaotian. Yes. He forgot it all. Then Su Xiaotian lived with Li Zhong, and when he was haunted by evil spirits at night, Li Zhong was able to turn the tide of danger as soon as possible. The next morning, Guan Twelve opened the door of the room and saw Li Zhong sitting on the sofa reading news. Recently, there have been several homicide incidents in our city. After investigation by the police, all of these people come from a village called Jinpu Village. The people in this village seem to have a strange custom of selecting 100 lucky ones every year to engage in brutal confrontation and killing. The winner will receive the supreme honor of the village. Although it is unclear why the people in this village suddenly run to our city, they seem to only kill the people in the village. However, please be careful. The police are still investigating this matter looking at the news, Guan Twelve felt an indescribable complexity in his mood. This news can be said to be very funny, but it is indeed very close. Their beginner tutorials were all conducted in Jianpu village, and this Jianpu village is the information on their ID card. According to the internet, 
it is unlikely to take long to find her. It seems that the process needs to be accelerated. Guan Twelve thought on this side, and Li Zhong was also thinking about this matter. Yesterday, he secretly calculated and found that the reason why Su Xiaotian's resentment was so deep was related to this simple village. It seems that he needs to go and see what happened. At this moment, Su Xiaotian also woke up. He looked at the two people standing and sitting in the living room without speaking, and suddenly felt a bit awkward in the atmosphere. He didn't know what to do for a moment. Um, do you want to have breakfast? Su Xiaotian spoke up to ease his embarrassment. Xiaotian, can I call you that? Li Zhong looked at Su Xiaotian and asked. Su Xiaotian nodded in confusion, unsure of what had happened. Xiaotian, I did some divination yesterday and found out that the reason why you have so many grievances is related to this simple village, so we need to go there. As soon as Li Zhong spoke, Guan Twelve looked at him with some complexity. Jinpu village is a village that appears out of thin air in order to make the player's identity legal. How is it related to the plot? You can't be fake, can you? Su Xiaotian hesitated after listening. His course still has half a semester left, so if you were on vacation at this time, don't wait for my summer vacation. Time is tight, we have to leave tomorrow. Li Zhong's tone couldn't refuse, forcing Su Xiaotian's words back. My parents don't know, Su Xiaotian wanted to say something more, but Li Zhong directly dialed Su Xiaotian's parents' phone number, and then with Su Xiaotian's stunned expression, the communication was completed. Su Xiaotian's parents said that as long as they could solve their son's problem, if he couldn't attend school, he wouldn't be able to afford it anyway. Su Xiaotian Official 12 The life of the wealthy second generation is really beautiful. Anyway, the decision to go to Jianpu village has already been made, so Guan Twelve decided to go as well. As a result, Li Zhong's disapproving voice came. What are you going to do? As a woman, you already have a heavy yin energy, so stay at home. Guan Twelve shrugged and said, I'm going there to find someone. Who? We can help you find it. I don't know why Li Zhong just doesn't want Guan Twelve to follow. Find 25 people. Guan Twelve looked up at the current number of survivors and firmly believed that Su Xiaotian was at the center of the plot. Dogecoin game would place players in the center of the plot, and as long as they followed Su Xiaotian, they would definitely be able to find other players. 25 people. Li Zhong frowned. Let me go with you, that's where I came from. Guan Twelve took out his ID card to prove his identity. As soon as he said this, Li Zhong took a deep breath and became even more wary of Guan Twelve. Just now in the news, it was mentioned that there are strange customs in that village, and the whole village is full of murderers. But Guan Twelve can live to this day, and Li Zhong doesn't believe she hasn't killed anyone. But Su Xiaotian was very innocent and didn't see the news. When he heard that Guan Twelve was from the village, his eyes lit up and he looked at Li Zhong and said, let her go together. If there's a local person, it's not easy for us to get lost, is it? Xiao Tian, you know her. Li Zhong suddenly paused halfway as he instinctively looked at Guan Twelve. Just now, Guan Twelve clearly saw the news, so why did he expose his identity at this time? Li Zhong suddenly thought of something, and his mind suddenly opened up. He looked at Guan Twelve and said, Are you looking for your tribe members? Officer 12. It's not wrong if you insist on saying that. The player nodded. By the way. 12 said she came here to find friends. Is your tribe your friend? Su Xiaotian was quite clever, but unfortunately, the answer to this question was meaningless, whether it was answered or not. But Guan 12 still nodded and told Su Xiaotian the answer. Li Zhong looked at Guan Twelve with a complex expression on his face. If the news was true, then Guan Twelve would definitely have a bloody battle to find her tribe members. At that time, it may involve Su Xiaotian. Li Zhong looked at the innocent Su Xiaotian and felt a bit conflicted. 
However, if Guan Twelve was not allowed to go, if her murderous intentions escalated, it would be a danger to him and Su Xiaotian. After much thought, Li Zhong finally agreed to let Guan Twelve accompany them to the simple village, but the journey was not peaceful. Su Xiaotian's body to the Yin caused many troublesome ghosts at night, but fortunately, Li Zhong himself was good enough to handle everything. At this time, Guan Twelve finally faced up to this young boy. Li Zhong. The employer is too naive. He needs to protect the employer well. Su Xiaotian. So, Twelve came from a simple village he he, I know Twelve better. Officer Twelve. Damn it. Two NPCs are actually related to the player's novice village, end of this chapter. Chapter 7. Grievance Soul Lock, 6. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. Chapter 7 Grievance Soul Lock, 6, of course, on the road, Guan 12 also encountered many players. Players were envious when they saw the player, and they couldn't even move the health bar on the opponent's head. Of course, not all players were killed easily when they came up. For example, the hostess of this hotel looked at Guan 12 with a smile that was even brighter than a flower and said, Ah hey! This girl doll is really handsome. I have never seen such a handsome girl doll before. Officer 12. Boss, your BJ accent is a bit heavy, so don't pretend to be from Shangxi, okay? It's a bit skewered. We're staying at the hotel, please give us three rooms. Thank you. Su Xiaotian smiled and took out his bank card. He was the one making the payment all the way, and Guan Twelve was a complete destitute. Li Zhong said that all expenses during the employment period were paid for by the employer, which were included in the contract. Su Xiaotian doesn't care either. Anyway, he has money, so just pay this small amount of money. Guan Twelve felt a bit jealous as he watched Su Xiaotian frantically swipe his cards all the way. Players are jealous of second-generation rich NPCs. Two rooms are enough, Li Zhong suddenly said, and then he whispered to Su Xiaotian, you are quite special. If anything happens at night, I can also protect you. Su Xiaotian nodded and felt that it made sense, then he said to the landlady, then let's have two rooms. The landlady looked at Su Xiaotian and then at Li Zhong, not knowing what was on her mind. She couldn't help but show a clear expression that I understood. I hit it. I hit it. Su Xiaotian felt a tingling sensation in his back as he looked at that expression. After going upstairs, he couldn't help but say to Li Zhong and Guan Twelve. This landlady's expression was so eerie just now. She shouldn't be a ghost, right? Officer 12. I'm sorry that the players were too crazy to scare you. Qi Li Zhong also answered with a serious expression. She has a shadow, not a ghost. Su Xiaotian nodded and breathed a sigh of relief before saying. I was scared to death. I thought ghosts had evolved like this now, but her expression just now was really scary, as if she was thinking about something that scared me. Official 12. I apologize for the inconvenience caused to you by the player. Guan Twelve was lying in bed. She had thought it wouldn't be peaceful tonight, but she didn't expect it to be so peaceful. She heard a clanging sound from the room next to Su Xiaotian and others, and the whole wall was shaking, making Guan Twelve restless. Guan Twelve got up irritably and opened the door, intending to talk to Su Xiaotian and the others. However, as soon as he opened the door, he looked at the landlady lying at the door with a lewd smile on her face, twisting her buttocks and desperately looking into Su Xiaotian's room. Official 12. What are you doing? Guan 12 couldn't help but ask. Shu. I'm peeking at the holy light. The player glared at Guan 12 and gestured for her to speak softly. Officer 12. What holy light? Wait. Isn't our fighting more important? Guan Twelve didn't care about that, rolled up his sleeves and kicked him over. The player was kicked flying and hit the wall, almost unable to get up in one gulp. 
the 80% pain made her unable to resist, hissing, and then curse loudly. I rely on you for being sick. Guan 12 glanced at the health bar on top of the player's head and said, well, it's not a mistake. It's the player, but this player is a bit crazy. You're sick, who are you scolding? Even though Guan 12 knew this angry remark, he couldn't help but retort. Who wouldn't know how to talk nonsense? Hey. No, what's the point of you always fighting and killing? I just want to live a peaceful life in the game, earn a little money, and see the sauce and wine between beautiful men. The landlady was indignant. You can change your BJ accent and speak Shangxi dialect again. Guan Zhong couldn't help roast. Ah, I'm sorry. The landlady felt a bit embarrassed as she touched the tip of her nose. Sorry ghost. Guan Twelve rolled up his sleeves and was about to work, but the door next to him suddenly bumped open and something flew out of it. After the smoke dissipated, Guan Twelve finally saw clearly that the thing was actually Su Xiaotian and Li Zhong. Li Zhong slammed Su Xiaotian, who was protecting his chest, into the wall and spat out a big mouthful of blood. When Su Xiaotian regained his senses and saw Li Zhong vomiting blood, his face turned pale with fear. He quickly asked him how he was doing, and Li Zhong said he was fine. Ah ah. It's true love. The landlady over there has already gone crazy. At least in the eyes of Guan Twelve. Twelve. Su Xiaotian noticed Guan Twelve standing there at this moment and quickly shouted, You leave that room. Guan Twelve was just listening to advice. As soon as he heard this, he turned around and was about to run, but suddenly a tentacle rushed out of the room and tightly entangled Guan Twelve. The alarm for Guan Twelve sounded loudly, and just as he was about to pinch his hand, he was suddenly raised by his tentacle and thrown out. Official 12 Guan Twelve followed suit and flew out, but fortunately the lost spot was exactly where Su Xiaotian and his companions were. Guan Twelve hit Su Xiaotian hard. Li Zhong vomited another mouthful of blood. Guan Twelve frowned tightly as he covered his waist in pain. 80% of the pain is too real, isn't it? Li Zhong. Su Xiaotian's shout made Guan Twelve look behind him, and he saw that Li Zhong had fallen to the ground and couldn't stand spitting blood. Guan Twelve quickly stood up and looked at Li Zhong with some guilt. She might have killed the NPC after finishing it. Or perhaps Su Xiaotian is the protagonist. With Su Xiaotian's constant calls, Li Zhong slowly opened his eyes. Officer 12. Great, she said players can't kill NPCs. And the landlady over there covered her mouth, with a nosebleed streaking through her fingertips. Her eyes were filled with tears and she trembled with excitement, crying as she watched the scene. I said they are true love. Official 12. Neurosis. And once again, the tentacles extended out of the room, this time targeting the boss lady who was going crazy over there. Then I saw the landlady being grabbed by her waist and pulled in before she could react. Officer 12. Why did I lose it? Immediately after, Guan 12 heard the boss's screams, and the next second, Guan 12 realized that there were only 19 people left above his head. Well, the player is quacking. NPCs can kill players, but players cannot kill NPCs, it's a game of pit fathers. Damn it. At this moment, the owner who touched his feet was finally willing to reveal the true face of Mount Lu. It was a huge monster that was three meters tall and had eight tentacles. The upper body was a woman and the lower body was tentacles. The female ghost has exquisite curves, with blue-purple skin and pitch-black hair. If you don't look at her disgusting feet filled with blue feces and saliva in her lower body, she is actually a beautiful woman. The monster suddenly shed tears, which were red tears. When she lifted her hand, it was a pair of tentacles. Woo 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 woo, the desperate cries of the monster made Guan Twelve tremble all over, followed by intense pain that made her involuntarily cover her ears. Sound wave attack, isn't this a big boss level? 
12 There are very few normal players like me anymore requesting votes, please, please, end of this chapter. Chapter 8 Grievance Soul Lock, 7 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Grievance Soul Lock, 7 The player wants to complain to the game team that the thing with remote sound waves and tentacles, which looks like a foreign object outside of this world, is actually a special ghost. And this is not a big boss yet. She is very angry. She fought against such a thing barehanded, how could she possibly pass? Isn't this forcing people to buy cheeks? Damn it. Compulsory consumption. Capitalism. What is this? Exactly. Su Xiaotian looked at the thing in front of him that could be called a monster and couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of saliva. No matter what it is, it was you who provoked it. Li Zhong wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth. He had also heard of ghosts of this level in legends. He took a deep breath, closed his eyes, opened his arms, and clasped his hands together. His thumbs, index fingers, and middle fingers extended and merged, and he took a deep breath. Then he read, the fragrance is deep and corresponds to the heavens and earth, igniting a clear fragrance that penetrates through the gates of heaven. The golden bird runs like a cloud and arrow, and the jade rabbit shines like a wheel. The south and north dippers are shining brightly in the sky, and colorful clouds are bustling. In the purple micro palace, a holy temple is opened. The second son of the Li family invites immortals and earnestly requests the help of the immortal lord to break this trap. Sun Wukong, the great sage of Qi Tian, invites you to ascend. As the final words fell, Li Zhong's demeanor suddenly changed. His lips curled up, and he smiled with a mischievous monkey-like expression. Then he glanced at the mop next to him and flipped over, picked up the mop and played with it twice before carrying it on his shoulder and charging towards the female ghost. The female ghost's tentacles crazily attacked, and Li Zhong deftly dodged them all, then jumped three meters high and hit the female ghost's face with a stick. The female ghost let out a scream. Then the crying grew louder. Guan Twelve felt that his seven orifices were about to bleed. Li Zhongli was closest. He covered his ears and bared his teeth before hitting the female ghost's mouth with a stick. He then seized the opportunity to chase after her and bit through his finger, directly pressing it on her forehead. He then recited, People come to separate the heavy paper ghost from the mountain, the thousand evil cannot be separated, the thousand evil cannot be separated. Urgent as the law. The blood on the female ghost's forehead emitted a golden light, and the female ghost screamed incessantly. She covered her forehead, but it was useless. The next second, the female ghost dissipated completely. The world suddenly quieted down. Please ascend the immortal's body. Exorcism curse. Guan Twelve was a bit surprised. Although it wasn't the first time she had seen this thing, it was still the first time she had seen it with such strong strength. Even a monster-like existence could be solved so quickly. As expected, being professional is different. Don't show off her small skills. Li Zhong suddenly lost his strength and fell heavily to the ground, feeling powerless. Li Zhong. Su Xiaotian quickly ran towards Li Zhong and helped him up. Li Zhong's face was pale, and he coughed wildly. Suddenly, he felt a fishy sensation in his throat and then spat out a mouthful of blood. Ah! Li Zhong, you vomited blood. How are you? Are you okay? We're not going to any simple village. Go find a doctor. Let's go to the hospital. Damn it! Why is there no signal? Su Xiaotian took out his phone and found that there was no signal. This young man, who has a good personality and never curses, was so anxious that he spat out foul language for the first time. Because cough cough. This place is very close to the simple village cough cough. Li Zhong covered his mouth, his face pale and weak, and it was indeed difficult to invite the great sage of Qi Tian based on his cultivation. I, take a break. Just take a break. 
Li Xiong lost consciousness as he finished speaking. He leaned against Su Xiaotian, his face turning pale with fear, and he shook Li Xiong desperately. In the end, the player couldn't bear to watch anymore. He reached out and patted Su Xiaotian's shoulder, saying. All right, he just fell asleep when he was tired. Please let him rest well. Ah. Su Xiaotian just let go of Li Zhong, but now they have a more concerning issue, which should be Su Xiaotian's concern. That landlady. No problem, if her family finds out about her. Officer 12. Don't worry, you won't find out. This boss lady is not really the boss lady at all. Players cannot kill NPCs, the boss is still alive and living well. Of course, Officer 12 cannot say these words. She can only tell Su Xiaotian to rest well, and everything will soon come to an end. The fact proves that it will indeed come to an end soon. The next day, Guan 12 opened his eyes and saw that there were only nine people left in the inventory above his head, which was so much less in one night. It seemed that he had experienced a considerable battle last night. Continuing like this, Guan 12 also knew that MVP himself was hopeless and could only hope for the reward of winning in the end. Fortunately, that was still quite generous. The next day, Li Zhong woke up. Although his face was still very pale, at least his complexion was much better than last night. Last night, he seemed to be about to crack the next second. Su Xiaotian is very worried about Li Zhong's condition, and he has been suggesting to go back and wait until he has rested before coming back. But after finding Li Zhong's refusal, he looked at Su Xiaotian and said seriously. The Li family has never backed down. Completing the contract is our agreed-upon mission. But your current health, Su Xiaotian frowned, still disagreeing with continuing to the simple village. I'm fine, I'm much better now, but I'm just too tired. All right, let's not waste our time. Li Zhong waved his hand and said he's fine, continuing to move forward for now. Su Xiaotian was stubborn but had no choice but to compromise. Fortunately, the distance ahead was not far and there was a direct bus. In less than two hours, the three of them stood at the entrance of Jinpu village. This simple village truly deserves to be called a simple village. Even the plaque at the entrance of the village is tattered and there are suspicious stains on it. Looking inside through the door, it looks like a run-down, dusty old tree with a crooked neck and no popularity, as if it has been deserted for a long time. Su Xiaotian instinctively looked at Guan Twelve as he looked at the village entrance. Guan Twelve was delicate and tender, completely different from the people who came out of such a village. Is this really a simple village? Su Xiaotian couldn't help but ask. Well, yes, isn't that simple enough? Guan Twelve was also shocked by such a big entrance. It's too shabby, isn't it? There's no need for such a thing to live up to its name. He was just curious that in such a village, you would be allowed to dye your hair, and judging from your appearance, you have never done any farm work. Li Zhong looked at Guan Twelve with a look of amusement, wanting to know how round she was. We are just poor, not feudal. Hair dyeing is very popular in our village, haven't you heard of killing Matt? Guan Twelve didn't think so. As for what to do with farming, they laughed to death. They didn't have time to kill players. Which foolish player is doing farming in such a game? This is not the life I long for. Ah. We have guests. As soon as she entered the village, Guan Twelve slapped her face. She watched helplessly as the young man with red hair, who was farming with a hoe, dug the ground with his blood stick. When she saw Guan Twelve and the others, she greeted them warmly. A pure and simple aura rushed towards us. Officer Twelve. Your behavior has scared the players. Ha ha ha. Ticket request ticket, with ticket plus change, simple and straightforward. End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Grievance Soul Lock, 8. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9 Grievance Soul Lock, 8, Guan 12's emotions were very complicated, 
especially when he saw that the person in front of her, who was also a player, had perfectly brought in the character of Farmer Uncle. Greet them warmly with a friendly expression. Please. You are a player. This game is a battle game between players. It's not my estate, this kind of business game is good. Guan Twelve was speechless, but Su Xiaotian naively shouted at the player. Uncle, are you from this village? Yeah. Are you from out of town? The player looked at them with a smile in fluent Mandarin. That, uncle, little brother, I'm only twenty years old. Please don't call me uncle, okay? Before Su Xiaotian could finish speaking, the player interrupted him and said more seriously. Uh, sorry. Su Xiaotian quickly apologized upon hearing this. Su Xiaotian spoke up and said something else. The official over there patted his shoulder and then took a step forward. How many people are there in this village? This person certainly refers to the player. Count me eight, the player replied generously. That's all the rest here. Guan Twelve touched the dagger on his back and thought about whether to solve him now. It's a pleasure to have friends coming from afar. Come and I'll invite you to my house as guests. At this time, players warmly and hospitably invite them. Really? I'll disturb you then. Su Xiaotian's eyes lit up as he felt that the people in this village were all good people. Unprepared, Li Zhong sighed helplessly, but he did not refute anything but Guan Twelve watched the player think for a moment and silently withdrew the dagger. Let's talk about it when we find an opportunity. Along the way, the player took them to see the surrounding scenery and also told them his name was Xiao Chuyan. Su Xiaotian and his team were surprised to find that the village, which looked like it was about to become barren, had so many flowers inside. Everywhere, there were blue tiles, red walls, two-dot story buildings, and gardens, with a crooked-necked willow tree planted at each entrance. Even the ground was not muddy, but rather cement blue stone slabs. Many people in the village greet them warmly, simple and hospitable. Of course, it also includes players hiding here. Guan Twelve noticed that some players looked at her with the same gaze as their prey. It seems that not all players who come to play this game are just thinking about the life they aspire to, and like her, they are striving for the prize money of victory. And what Su Xiaotian was curious about was that the crooked-necked willow trees at the doorstep of these passing houses were all covered with bright red bars. When the wind blew, the willow branches swayed and danced in the air, and the sunlight fell, even the road was shining brightly. It was very beautiful. Su Xiaotian couldn't help but ask Xiao Chuyan. Are there any happy events in your village recently? Ah, uh, I don't know, Xiao Chuyan instinctively replied. You are from this village, why don't you know? Li Zhong frowned and looked at the player in confusion. I really don't know. When I came here, my hands were hanging here. It's okay during the day, but when the cold wind blows at night, these red stripes dance wildly as if they see a woman in red hanging and crying, it's so creepy. Xiao Chou said, feeling embarrassed. But Li Zhong caught a fatal clue. When you said you came here. Aren't you from the village? No, I am. I have evidence, this is my ID card. Xiao Chuyan showed Li Zhong his ID card and couldn't help but mutter, Why do I have to explain to you NPCs? What NPC? Su Xiaotian couldn't help but ask. Ah, it's nothing. This is a kind of speech, which means it doesn't belong to outsiders in the village, that's right. Su Xiaotian. It's a bit far fetched. Isn't NPC just the character who drives the plot in the game? Li Zhong. This is lying, right? Even someone who doesn't play games often knows what NPC means, okay? Officer 12. I'm sorry that the player's intelligence insulted you. But it is obvious that Xiao Chuyan did not intend to explain to them, and continued to introduce himself along the way. This is Lao Li's house. It seems to be opposite Lao Lu's house. 
There is an old man named Lu who keeps a dog in Lao Lu's house. You should pay attention to it. By the way, this is Zhao Meiren's home. She looks really beautiful, but she's getting older. I heard she's 30.8 years old and looks like 20.8. My dishes are not destined. Xiao Chuyan chattered about a bunch of useless things, completely devoid of any practical details, and even couldn't name some places. This made Li Zhong even more convinced that this seemingly simple and unadorned person in the village was not actually from this village. He glanced at Guan Twelve next to her again and found that her face was plain. In some places, when Su Xiaotian asked her, her answer was also stuttering, indicating that he was not familiar with this place. But their ID cards do show this address. What made him even more strange was that there were very few people in this village who dyed their heads. Although the residents in the village were very enthusiastic, they could see their differences. Although the people who dyed their heads were enthusiastic, their gaze at them was very plain. Instead, they looked at Guan Twelve and the strange person with fanaticism in their eyes, as if they had seen a wild beast of prey. And those simple black-haired and white-haired people looked at them with the same enthusiasm and falsehood. False. Li Zhong's heart sounded an alarm. This village is definitely not as simple as they think. The four of them quickly arrived at Xiao Chuyan's residence, which was no different from the other homes. It was a two-dot-story small building with green tiles and red walls, and a garden. There was a crooked-necked willow tree planted at the entrance, which was covered with red ropes. Guan Twelve stood under the willow tree and reached out to touch the nearest red rope, only to find herself lost in thought as she looked at the red dye on her fingertips. The quality of this dye is really poor, it's fading. Guan Twelve expressed protest. Ah, I suggest you don't touch that red rope. At this moment, Xiao Chuyan reminded Guan Twelve slowly. Hmm. Why? Li Zhong asked. Is there any secret inside that they don't know? Because it fades, is difficult to wash, and has a foul smell of socks, said Xiao Chuyan with a serious expression. Li Zhong. Upon hearing this, Guan Twelve instinctively sniffed his own hand. Hmm. It smells like smelly socks, so smelly. Guan Twelve put down his hand with some disdain. Players' hands are dirty, make sure to file a complaint when going out. Xiao Chuyan didn't know where to take out a wet towel and handed it to Guan Twelve, saying, this can't be washed with water, we need specialized tools. Officer Twelve took it with suspicion and was about to open it when he heard the voice of Xiao Chuyan over there. Ah, uh, yes, 200, WeChat or Alipay. Without hesitation, Guan Twelve threw the wet wipes back. I'll go fuck you. A torn wet towel costs 200. How can players cheat players? Xiao Chuyan. I am local, but I am not familiar with the local area 12 I'll go to your damn business. Then it's about asking for tickets, xx, end of this chapter. Chapter 10. Grievance Soul Lock, 9. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Grievance Soul Lock, 9. This is just a wet wipes, 200 yuan is a bit expensive, isn't it? Even the wealthy second dot generation Su Xiaotian couldn't help but frown. Is this price certain to not disrupt the market and trigger a currency crisis? No 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 this is not a regular wet wipe. Apart from this, there is nothing that can remove the odor from your hands. Moreover, this odor persists and can make you unable to sleep at night. Guan Twelve looked expressionlessly at Xiao Chuyan, and then she silently pulled out the dagger from her waist. I originally planned to solve you tonight, but it seems like we can move forward. Guan Twelve turned a dagger in his hand and attacked without hesitation. Wait twelve times. Su Xiaotian reached out his hand to grab it, but was stopped by Li Zhong. Li Zhong sneered and said. Xiao Tian, you have a clear look. In this village, especially these hair dying people, they are not as simple as you imagine. What? 
Su Xiaotian looked over in confusion and saw Guan Twelve charging towards him with a dagger, only to be easily dodged by Xiao Chuyan. Hey yo! Don't be so anxious, calm down, little girl. You can't just look at the surface when playing games. The most annoying thing about Guan Twelve is this kind of verbal combat. She said impatiently, I don't care if it's superficial, I know there's only one winning player. Guan Twelve turned around and kicked Xiao Chuyan, crossing his chest to resist, but he was still kicked away. Damn it! Damn it, why are you such a strong little girl? The 80% pain made Xiao Chuyan grin in pain, and he couldn't help but burst out. Guan Twelve looked up at his blood bar, damn it, it just dropped a little. She kicked me normally, but I have to subtract 100% of my health. Damn it! The skin is not as thick as usual. Wait a minute. Bridge Bean Sack As Guan Twelve wanted to continue beating Xiao Chuyan, he quickly raised his hand and surrendered. He threw the wet wipes to Su Xiao Tian and said, No more money, no more money, I'll give you a gift, really. Can you listen to me first? Guan Twelve withdrew the dagger, and some things came to an end. Moreover, she knew that it was not the right time for a PK, and there were countless pairs of eyes staring at them around. If the blood bar falls off, she won't add it back on her own unless she takes medication. She wouldn't do such foolish things as sandpipers and clams competing for profits. Guan Twelve took the wet wipes and rubbed them vigorously on his hands, then sniffed them. Well, there's really no smell left, it looks like the player didn't take any counterfeit goods. What's your name? Xiao Chuyan asked Guan Twelve. Twelve. Officer Twelve replied. Twelve. Hmm alright, Miss Twelve, although our relationship is not good, I think you also know that this is not the time for a fight. I sincerely invite you and your friends to come and visit my house. There will be interesting things happening in this village at night. Don't you want to take a look? Xiao Chiu said, pointing to the red rope on the willow tree at the door. I'm not interested, I just want to end it as soon as possible. Guan Twelve refused Xiao Chuyan's invitation without hesitation. Wait for Twelve, maybe we need to see what happens at night. Su Xiao Tian, who had been watching from the side, vaguely felt that this was related to the frequent appearance of ghosts on him, and he had to take a look. Guan Twelve looked at Su Xiao Tian and fell silent for a while. The NPC didn't need to communicate with the player about this matter, but he sought the player's opinion. The NPC was too sincere, and the player couldn't bear to refuse. So the four of them arrived at Xiao Chuyan's room. Inside this two-dot story building, it was warm and cozy, with everything available. Guan Twelve sat on the sofa as if he were at home, but Su Xiao Tian and Li Zhong were a bit reserved. But Xiao Chuyan changed into a family uniform, with red fur paired with a white shirt, which made him look like a wealthy young master in the city. Xiao Chuyan poured a cup of warm water for the three of them, then sat aside and looked at Su Xiao Tian, saying. Can your eyes see something different? Su Xiao Tian was taken aback and instinctively spoke, Why do you know? I guessed. Dot. So I suggest you don't go out at night, Xiao Chuyan reminded mysteriously. Why? Why? Su Xiao Tian was infected by this eerie aura and couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of saliva, weakly asking. Because at night your eyes will see. Very dangerous things, Xiao Chuyan suddenly smiled mysteriously, and his tone became eerie. The surrounding atmosphere suddenly became cold. Su Xiao Tian couldn't help but shiver and his whole body trembled. At this moment, Li Zhong held Su Xiao Tian's hand. Su Xiao Tian looked over and saw Li Zhong's comforting gaze. For some reason, although Li Zhong didn't speak, Su Xiao Tian felt much more at ease. Don't be afraid, with me around, no matter what kind of fierce and resentful ghost it is, it won't hurt you. Well, thank you, Li Zhong. You are my best friend. Su Xiao Tian smiled at Li Zhong. Officer 12. Are you not alone with these two people every day? 
Xiao Chuyan couldn't help but approach Guan Twelve and ask in a low voice. However, Guan Twelve suddenly pushed him away and said, Can you speak without being so close? Who knows if you'll pretend to speak and then prick me. That's too much, no matter what we say. Enemy, we're not friends. Xiao Chuyan was interrupted by Guan Twelve before he could finish speaking. Who wants to be friends with players? There is only one winner. Fools make friends with competitors. Okay, Xiao Chuyan compromised. Time was lost in the chat of a few people, and soon it was dark. Xiao Chuyan didn't know how to cook, so he entrusted the cooking to Su Xiaotian. Of course, to prevent Su Xiaotian from being entangled by any demons and monsters again, Li Zhong was guarding him from the side. As for Guan Twelve, he decided to go out for a walk while eating, but as soon as he got up, he was stopped by Chiu Xiaoyan, do you want to go out? Well, that's right. Guan Twelve wanted to go out for a walk. Remember what I said. Don't go out in the dark. Well, remember, I was just walking around the door. Do you want to come? You can come if you want, I won't stop you. After Guan Twelve finished speaking, he ignored Chiu Xiaoyan's obstruction and pushed the door open before leaving. Chiu Xiaoyan looked at Guan Twelve's back and let out a sigh, unable to help but exclaim, there are so many players who can't sit still now. Can't we enjoy the scenery of the game world? We must fight and kill. Is that meal ready soon? Where's Twelve? Su Xiaotian poked his head out of the kitchen and found that Guan Twelve, who was originally sitting on the sofa, was missing. He couldn't help but ask. She. Xiao Chuyan thought she should have gone to find the player, but she definitely couldn't say that to Su Xiaotian, so she came up with a reasonable explanation. She hates what you made and went out to eat. Su Xiaotian. Wait. Don't you think this is a bit ridiculous? Xiao Chuyan. Nowadays, young people just like to fight and don't know how to experience life at all. Twelve, I really want to kill you now. Requesting tickets, requesting tickets. Without tickets, there's no motivation. Why don't you make a noise and let me see the popularity? End of this chapter.